This is the bat cave. I've Let's... never uh, <laughs> never really shown anyone this, this spot. Before. Thanks for having us. Thanks for welcoming in. It's good to see you. Dude, thanks for coming all the way to my place. <laughs> it's a pleasure. It's lovely to be here. It's my first time actually in this part of the Midwest. And being out here, I realized like, wow, isolation plays such a big part in your creative spirit, right? Yeah, the isolation helps when creating something. I think that people would assume that the pressure of, you know, making it another record to follow kind of something that was considered um, a big moment for us in our career would be the pressure when really it's the tiny, it's the tiny comments that I think about, like when someone like a friend's mom says, I love I love your last record. I, I could just press play and listen to the whole thing as I worked out. Mm. Something tiny like that when I'm working on a song will all of a sudden, like, hey, can they work out to this? It's the tiny little comments about the music and um, the decisions made in it that if I let too much of that in, mm. it can completely affect whether I turn left or right. Well, look, it's really great to be here, man, in your in your studio, in your space where this new album has been made. Um, you know, and I, and I know that this is a particularly intense moment for us to catch up because normally what happens is, you know, I'd catch up and then I'd like yourself after a few weeks of decompression, the album's done. Yeah. But I sort of snuck up on you and did this deliberately because I really, when I heard the music, the idea of coming here and seeing you the day the album sort of got done, that seed was planted because I realized that you had gone so deep and on the ideas, the concepts, and the entire complete thought of this album that I wanted to get you at its most raw. And that's literally right now, right? I mean, right now. I, I yeah, I'm, I'm uh, pretty tired. And every moment away from a song is very valuable because of the fresh ears aspect of it. How was that break that you took? Necessary? It was, it was very necessary. A lot of, the last album cycle, there's a lot of traveling and well, you caught lightning in a bottle. I mean, you had to write it as you had to go. You had yeah. To go, go, go. Yeah, the schedule was um, very unpredictable. You know, this is the next thing we needed to do to to capitalize on mm. on the momentum. This time around, I'm, I'm looking forward to a little more structure. Like, we kind of know what to expect a little bit more, which is fantastic. And yet you find yourself, from, from what I've heard of this album, which is the whole thing thus far, um, is that you have chosen this opportunity to dive deeper. I love stories. I love being able to dive into a story and write from that perspective. A lot of a lot of my writing is obviously very personal and something I'm working through, but there's mm. some of it that I, you know, like to understand the people around me and try to dissect and, and analyze it and um, I wanted to I wanted to create a world that I could to go into and, and write from and and in that world, I was, um, I, I, I could control the exterior and what was kind of pushing down on me. And, it, and that, that, that control was very helpful in the creative process mm -hmm. where in, in the reality we, we are, I can't really control that, how people perceive it or what pressures are being applied to what types of songs should be written what type of record should be written and how people feel about it you know, what decisions we should make and what what shows we should play and whether or not we should do live tv and all the stuff that you know i don't particularly enjoy you lived that life really lived inside that world as much as you probably could stomach on the last album because blurry face was it kind of makes sense because I feel like you like trench. This is as you said it before to some degree is is a geographical yeah. play. It's like you've you've created a world. Blurry face was a character. Yeah. So you had to go front that. Mm -hmm. How did you feel at the end of that experience? Um, because I think fans will want to know. They loved the way that you announced your hiatus. It's always funny how you have to announce hiatuses these days, right? Which we never called it a hiatus. I know. By the way. It just that's kind what of, we do. We it, just pick that term up. You guys like, picked that. Didn't you? We have to just be like, we got to call it something. Yeah. Can I call it a holiday? Right? Being musicians, a holiday. Doesn't hiatus kind of say that like Josh and I were sick of each other? Isn't that what that kind of means? Hiatus is always the step, the step before a split. Yeah. It's like it's like an intervention. Yeah. That's that's not what happened, but. If that's what we're calling it, it's fine. Yeah. So what went wrong with you guys? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can see eye to eye on anything. Uh, you seem to have a great relationship. And I guess that even at the end of all that touring, it, it, I mean, you tell me how it all felt at the end of the Blurry Face campaign with heathens thrown on top. Yeah. After I had done, I wrote Blurry Face, we released it, we started touring it a bunch. I couldn't, there was something, 
sometimes it's hard to, to start creating. Mm. Uh, it's kind of like a muscle mm. you have to work out. Well, when, when the heathens things came, they came up, I kind of took that as an exercise. Like, let me just get something going. Get it, give me a reason to write right now because I, I, I have a lot to say, but I just can't. Everything I turn to, every every progression, every sample just feels uninspired to me right now. And um, this this idea came up, well, there's this movie coming out and I didn't know much about the movie. And, you know, they want to know if you would, you would write a song for it. I'm like, well, I don't know. I, I, that's not really, I've never done anything like that before. Um, and then they, they showed me a few scenes and they said, well, you know, we want you to do either like a shoot 'em up Will Smith like song or a twisted love song between the Joker and um, Harley Quinn. And neither of those things struck me as, and I was like, you know, I'm just gonna write a song that I feel like is probably gonna be for the next record or, or at least be for our fans. With my own twist on, if I were meeting with those villains and I was bringing someone along, like bring, a bring your friend to work day, what, would, what kind of conversation would I have in the car before I got him there? Um, in a sense, if this song were to kind of, well, we kind of got shoved into the mainstream. Mm. And I felt like I always wanted to explain to the mainstream audience, like, about our fans and who we really are and try to bring them along and kind of go, listen, this is this is what you should expect. You know, tread lightly. Um, but we're, you know, we're, we're powerful and, they, and these kids have something to say mm. and they're worth listening to. Mm. And so that song kind of became something that I wanted to write to, to explain our dynamic with our fans and thinking that it would in no way fall in line with the movie and then it did and then it just kind of took off from there and so it was a good exercise to get things flowing again. Did it? After yeah. that did you feel inspired? Yeah. Started writing more. Yeah. A lot of ideas. Strange hit. Yeah no uh, the the chorus was initially the chorus melody was the verse melody because I just didn't feel like it was moving around the changes like like it should and um, I remember I showed Josh and a couple other guys on the road when I was just demoing it on my mm. laptop and all I had was the verse and like just the beat and the vibe. And I was like, I gotta find a chorus. And a few minutes after I'd showed them, we're, you know, getting ready for the show and I hear someone, I still don't know who it was. It was one of the four or five guys that I was kind of just showing stuff to. They whistled the, the melody mm. of what I thought was the verse <laughs> down the hall as I was getting ready. <laughs> And that's when I was like, that's the chorus. So how do we get to Trench, Tyler? How do you get, how do you go from a character-based concept into something which is an entire world, which requires so much more fleshing out and so much more color and the videos require so much more commitment and everything else? Yeah, well, you asked earlier, like, how was it to take a break, like the hiatus and mm. to step away for what is now, I guess, a year? Um, honestly, uh, the moment, our last show, which was here in Columbus, it's like our final show of the entire cycle. I went home and I started work coming up with this, this world. And it just, it took, it, it started to consume me is all I could think about. I know every aspect of this world. Like I know what the weather's like in this world and, and it, I wanted to go there and right from that place. Um, and this studio then kind of became, in a sense, my my version of it. And I really wanted to dive deeper into the narrative of who Blurryface is, not just to me, but who he's become. You know, it's, it's always probably very true, but it, it seems a little cliche to say, you know, it's, we wouldn't be here without our fans. And, you know, this is a, you know, this is about our fans and, um, it wouldn't be without them. But I don't think they know how much they've written the narrative and how much of a back and forth we've been having without them really even being fully aware. Mm. 
this record is i mean they 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 really did help write it this thing wouldn't be breathing without them and they helped create this world as well um how do you how do you absorb that influence because you can see it when you're on a stage and you can hear it when you have a chance to meet them and talk to them about it and how do i hear them yeah like are they taking yeah it is it is the internet man yeah yeah i'm, I'm around they're fl- and they're fleshing it out they're taking yeah. blue face and they're I'm writing around. things about it and they're adding to it and moving things around and yeah i mean that's just incredible that's like creative collaboration in real time yeah i mean the character of blurry face was this was this person to me that i was trying to confront but then as the record cycle went on and as i saw him kind of come to life mm. through other people's perspective and our fans the way that they viewed him it drove me to like agree with them on how he's perceived and how's he changed how's it changed if you go back to what blurry face really was representing at the time is that kind of that mirror that I call it a seat at the table that you can stare across and really understand. I mean, I, I, everyone knows what they don't like about themselves, but how do you compensate for that? What are you doing because of because you don't like that? I'm trying to understand that and maybe fix that. Then I realized that it's all about jurisdiction, where there's certain places that I'll be, whether it's mentally or physically, where he he has jurisdiction and if i can try to leave those places if i can try to stay away from those places then he starts to lose a little more of a grip and and control of of um of me and that's what transient was and what it is and help me kind of like compartmentalize in my mind where i need to try to leave and get to somewhere that's safer and a little more unpredictable, a little more wild, um, much more creative, uh, a little scarier, mm-hmm. a little bit of a uh, an abyss. Um, but you don't have to play by his rules. Mm. That's helped. I wonder when you realized that you were different. You thought about things different, and things settled with you differently. And at what point in your life you realized that you were going to have to develop some tools in order to function and live with just the person that you are. Mm-hmm. I never would have turned to music if if I didn't feel like I needed to work on something or change or cope with something. I think that I was perfectly fine before music and then something happened where I just, this. I, I it just felt like a, a buildup of some sort, and I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to release that. I didn't know how to decompress that and to have an outlet for it. Um, and I was forced to learn how to play the piano, at least the way I, I look at it. I grew up sharing a, a bedroom with my brother, and he would tell you, like, I mean, we both love music, but there was something that happened where I realized, okay, I can, I can say anything I want now. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I first showed my parents a song or two, I, I was really concerned that they were going to be really concerned. How would your parents take it? Well, that's what was so surprising about it was when I was, con- uh, you know, concerned about. Like, it felt like when I, when I was writing a song and I would show someone, it was like, okay, now let's start the conversation. Mm. But what would usually have been the beginning of a long conversation slash check up on you slash lecture um, was just, wow, that's great. And that was it. Like, that was the end of the conversation. And that's what I was like, I can do this You're more. Really, yeah, the relief. I, I, don't, I don't have to, like, keep on talking about it mm. afterwards. What role did your faith play in that when you were growing up and trying to kind of be the person that you grew up being? And also growing into being a young adult and wanting to be an artist and wanting that freedom, that flexibility to touch on subjects because you've got to get out of your system, right? Like I could see mm-hmm. that that could create a conflict if not if it wasn't yeah. managed right. I have this theory about leapfrogging in generations. And I think it 
kind of apply to faith, can apply to wealth. There's this constant kind of overcompensation and then compensating that. My parents grew up in an environment where there really wasn't any talk of faith or any sort of religion. Um, and then they both had a moment where they, they became Christians when they were uh, like in their college age. And so when they got married and wanted to raise kids, they were like, we're going to, you know, we want to raise a family that, that, you know, has faith and believes in, believes in God and mm. instilled that. And what I believe about God and my faith is, I would say is very different from them. Mm. But I think it's a lesson in knowing that what I believe is different from everyone. You know, even my, my mom and my dad, people who formed me, they should, they should, in theory, have the closest version of it, but it's so different, even even that. And um, I think it's actually made made my faith stronger in the version that you know I I believe and I you know hold on to. And this music I'm trying to create and trying to like answer those questions. I'm throwing those questions out that I felt like you know weren't supposed to be asked. But when I ask it in a song, my parents just say, that's great. And that, that, that was such a big moment for me. Nice. And so, yeah, my faith is constantly playing a part in the music that I write. As I said at the very beginning of our conversation, you're so tucked away in here. It's, I can see why you would just continue to work and create and work and create because it's a very protected place. And I mean, it feels literally like there were five stories underground. Yeah, bomb <laughs> you know? shelter. Yeah, it does. Yeah. You know, and I wonder what it's like when you pop your head up above ground for you. What life's like. Let's let's talk about the popping the head out of the ground because that's actually a, a, uh, a phrase Josh and I have used to kind of describe like the part of our career that we just don't remember. Yeah. Wait, how did you guys like all of a sudden do our version of making it or getting people's attention. We see all these bands around us. I'm talking about local scene when back, you know, eight, nine years ago. We see all these other bands around us. Mm -hmm. We're trying to, should we do what they're doing? Should we kind of try to follow their lead? Should we? And we decided, you know what? Let's just go underground. And we went underground and we came up with a show. And then we, with our head down, we just started saying yes to that show. Yes to that. Let's play that. Let's play that. Let's play that. Let's do that. Mm -hmm. Let's create this. Mm -hmm. Head is down. And then all of a sudden we came, we came up. And we had a record deal and we were we were doing a headline tour. Mm. It's like, man, how did that happen? And I realized the importance of isolation and just honing in on something and not letting, hey, what are they doing? Or what should we follow that? Or what is that? Does that change our decision now that they did that? And just kind of diving in and, and going for it and then coming up and realizing, wow, we're like, five miles ahead of those other bands that we were just looking at. What role does Josh play in all this for you outside of being an amazing drummer and being a part of one, one half of the band and everything else, but on a human level, you know, you guys are, you've lost similarities, but also you seem like kind of different people, which is good. I think, I, I mean, in the live show especially, there's been some shows where, man, I don't feel like I should be up here right now. Yeah. I don't feel good enough. I don't feel like what I'm doing is considered good but then I, I there's just been so many times I look over at Josh and he's just in ripping it. man and it and it just shocks my system and then I walk down stage and then just square my shoulders up to the audience and then there's only really been one show where it happened to him and me and we got off stage and we were just like what just happened do you know at the time that it was happening yeah it was a festival and I think it was Would have been like 2013 it was like one of our first times doing a festival in europe what i think it was it may have been puckle pop yeah thrown onto a main stage and we're like oh my gosh we got main stage it's like 3 p.m that's crazy and you just realize oh okay this is a scheduling thing like i mean and rightfully so it's our first time in that country like mm. we there's no reason why we should we should have had an audience, but you know, when you when you get ready to play a show, you kind of like, I wonder who's going to be there. Is 
I always assume no one's going to be there just to get myself ready, but I wasn't ready for the empty field. <laughs> <laughs> like, that field was so much bigger with people. People will think, like, look how many people there when they're the, when it's full. It's like, this field is ginormous. Like, yeah. now wait until everyone's gone. Yeah. And then you realize how big that field is. It must be interesting finishing the record and watching people get it right or get it wrong in real yeah. time. Are you even reading well, what people are it. saying? They are they are also building the world. Like I said, we're very mm. not to come off as like being on that stalker level, but I do watch them. Mm. And I see how and I don't watch everyone though. I I watch the ones that, that really really get it, really understand. So you really have specific wanna... fans that you literally not spe- I mean it's a it's a it's a group of them. I guess there's just this like outer layer noise. Mm that I just consider to be not relevant. But what is that 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 fan that really understands and is, is has tracked with me up until this point? How are they how is this hitting them? And the story builds from there, man. We'll see if this works, by the way. You're talking you're pitting this idea of a, of a concept and the story is very thought out and there's there's a bunch of time spent in between release and I don't I, I don't even know if this is gonna gonna work in the day of streaming and getting a single out every chance you can. When you guys first came out, people didn't understand the depth of the subject matter and what you were really trying to say. They were focusing on the melodies and the music and the beats and the production and the live shows and all the things that make a surface impression. And over the course of all your albums now we've found you going deeper and deeper and saying, look, you know. There are fundamental things I'm trying to fix here, or I'm trying to understand, you know. And now, more than ever, we're all trying to understand those things. Hmm. And we're all having louder conversations about anxiety, depression, lack of self-worth. And we're we're speaking as, as one a lot more clearly about that because I think that that's pretty accepted. That's a good way of trying to mystify it do you know what I mean we're getting that right we're getting that right this is moving in the right direction for sure it's something that you experience I'm taking a punt on that listening yeah. to your music yeah um, the fact that we're now in a world where we're talking about it uh, is something that I've been looking for for a while and uh, I'm really glad that we're here I'm proud of our culture in that way for sure um, It's, I mean, suicide, too. You know, you, you, we like to name, like, the depression and the anxiety. You're right. We're terrified of that word. Yeah, we got to say that, too, that. you know. And, right. and it's it's finally, we're talking about it. It's a thing, you know. My mom's a school teacher, and she, she has, she, I talk with her all the time about the things that she looks out for and how, how it affects kind of that environment as its own microcosm of a, of a culture. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, um, it's important to talk about and that it's real and. How real can it get for you? I've always been pretty good at compartmentalizing and there's nothing, it's not because I had to cope with something or whatever. I think that I was maybe born with just being able to compartmentalize. Um, and I think my music is like the only real true window into a compartment that I, mm. I, um, about as, that's about as comfortable as I like to get with diving into something that I, that is still breathing, moving, mm. shifting, adapting, um, becoming immune. And, um, as much as the conversation about it is very good, um, there's something about the personal f- aspect of it. Mm that it, it is very good to make sure that it doesn't take life and doesn't um, gain traction and breathe oxygen. Mm, and so mm. my music is me talking about it and is the window into it. Mm. Um, but I don't, I don't think it's healthy for me to give you the keys to that house. Mm. I, I, the reason I reached for my phone um, was because I'm looking at the track listing and uh, I wanted to talk about 
Um, we've talked about the first song. I want to talk about the last song. I want to talk about Leave the City. I want to talk about the restrained weight that's mm. in that song and how you never quite reaches the crescendo and it always promises but doesn't quite get there. And then at yeah. the end, it just, it's like, I mean, you tell me what the last word on the album is. The last words. There's an there's a isolated sentence. They know what I mean. Yeah. Um, they know what I mean. That song, not only is it inside of the, the narrative, but in that narrative, I know that I wanted to, I, I needed to leave somewhere and start this journey and this, mm. this point in between two places that a lot of us can find ourselves in, whatever version of that fits into your life. We're always trying to, we're always trying to dance in between those two places. How mm. do we get mm. there? Mm. And it's scary and it's, you don't know what to expect and it's kind of hard to see and, um, but that, but this record is about pushing through and, and starting that, starting that that journey between those two places. Yeah, it feels started, and I would never, in this record, I have I did not define what that that where you're supposed to be is though. I there's no name for it. There's no, that's not defined, and that was intentional, to be a part of this process. I knew this record was about getting up and starting that, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to find that thing in this record yet. And that's what the song Leave the City does. It gets you there and then it doesn't. Kind of drops you, you off and like, yeah. okay. You're about to embark on another, you know, tour and all the things that come with making music and reaching your fans. But Leave the City could take you anywhere. Hmm. Right? I mean, yeah. do you even... What's next? What's next? And is it even music? And is it... Did you enjoy that year off? I mean, you've got an amazing house. You're married. You've got. I said to your, to Jenny, your wife, who's lovely, by the way. She's. Um, I just can get on record. She, uh, can I talk about her for a second? One hundred percent. Okay. Starting this career felt like I was standing at the edge of a, an ocean, and I was given some supplies, and they were like, "Okay, make a boat." And I, and I put this thing together, and I wrapped it up, and I built this boat, and enough to start to float. And we started going, and found some more debris on the way, and kind of built this thing. And then before you know it, I'm in this like tugboat-sized thing, and it's got a motor, and we're going. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, eventually things happen, and I, I'm on a, I'm on a yacht, and we're just flying it through this through this journey. And all the while, I think that some people would assume that my significant other in the process is in a smaller boat next to me, waiting for this boat to inevitably either wreck or run out of fuel. And when it does, I hop onto hers and we head off into the sunset. When actually what's happening is in relation to who she is to me, I've built this little tugboat thing, and that's about that's about as big as it ever got. And she is waiting for me to run out of gas <laughs> in a cruise ship. <laughs> and when that goes down, I've got this to pick me up. Mm -hmm. It's just a really weird way of saying that she's the best thing I've accomplished. Mm. And I can't wait to just lean on her. Oof. Her. There you go. There you go. All right. I can't wait. Those those are great words. And I maybe can't. that'll inspire the next record. Oh, thing. there he is. He's pulling it back from the brink of absolute disaster. <laughs> that was the moment where it all came out right there. But understandably so on the last day of the album, you're like, you know, and remember what I said about flirting with finality? Mm -hmm. Artists who, what's the obsession with finality? Yeah. You have this life. You have this other boat. Yeah. And yet you choose to stay on the, on the tugboat, man. Are you unafraid of of living a different life? I think that... Um, You'd be amazed how many musicians are afraid mm, of stopping. Yeah. I, uh, I think what helps me is to glorify getting old. <laughs> Not be afraid of it. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. And I think that if if our culture were to see our elderly in that way as like they've accomplished something 
they've ran a race and they have a lot to tell us about how we could better run it. I think that that would help with a lot of things. Is that, have you always felt that way? Is that why you put two old people on the cover of Vessel? Yeah, I've always felt that way. And actually my grandfather who's on that cover, he, yeah. he died uh, last month, but he was a um, big part of my life. And I think more so now after his passing, do I realize how much of a resource I had. And I have, I have one grandfather who's still living who's absolutely still an inspiration to Ask me. Ask the questions. You know, he's, a, he's dealt with alcoholism his whole life and mm -hmm. he's been sober for so many years now. And you've never drunk, right? No. Yeah, never had, never, and, and being on the road and all that stuff, never felt the pull to it, just doesn't I've had it. one, I, I've had, you want to ask me about my first alcoholic beverage? 100%. It was a, uh, it was an expired Bud Light. <laughs> and I was like probably 13. That's it? And it was terrible. Oh, dude. And uh, in a way, I think it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, nah, I'm fine that. with that. <laughs> I had to chase it with Gatorade. <laughs> it was awful. I'm excited, man. Nope, nope, nope. Told you it's a slanted, it's a slanted table. <laughs> Why do you think I have all these gigantic mouse pads over here? Dude, this is the most pristine and clean, amazing, like... I gotta be honest with you. Don't tell me you cleaned it for us. Jenna but... dusted this before you guys came. Have you been literally sitting in here in your pants, like in your boxer shorts, literally just stinking up the joint? It's... Did yeah. you grow a beard? I... Yeah. You did grow a beard? Yeah, I did. I shaved last night. Get out of here. You had a beard. How, how deep did it go? It was terrible, man. How... No, how... Like, it was committed were so you? itchy and I hated it. Was it long? It wasn't... It was stringy. It was like your first real beard? It was not... Like... It would have looked it terrible. A, it was a you shame. Got a really got a, you got a culture of beard. You can't just grow one out and think that you're going to look like Rick Rubin. That takes like decades I know. of planning. I know. There's so many more things I need to go through in my life before I can <laughs> really puberty. get in. Yeah, I mean, puberty is one of them. So many things you got to experience for the very first time. Add a beard. Trousers. At some point you have to put those on. Yeah. See how they feel. I didn't shower for a long time. There was a moment where I hadn't looked in the mirror in like a week. You should try that. It's crazy. Oh my God. What did you notice the first time you looked at yourself? Uh, I felt like I was getting older. Wow, so you noticed the change because you yeah, went in a Yeah, in a process. week, I was like, man, maybe I was just really tired. But, no, yeah. That actually makes sense if you haven't noticed anything. What were you eating? You, you were being fed, obviously. Yeah, I mean, Jenna was... Taking she, care of you. She's a culinary artist. Did, uh, did was she ever concerned? Did she ever come down and just put you, pet you on the shoulder and just be like, you gotta get some sleep. Now. Yeah, she told me, like, you should eat. <laughs> you should, you should, hey, she, she's never too particular about hygiene, but she did several times, like, when's the last time you took a shower? So, <laughs> just those types of questions. What an amazing time in your life, man, to be able to um, have achieved all of this and know you still have fuel in the tank to make your most ambitious album and project to date. Like, most people settle here, and then it's there's a compromise mm -hmm. somewhere along the line. And there's, there's no compromise going on in your art. And yet you've already gotten to this place. Yeah. And I just think like as a way of saying goodbye, I wonder if you ever allow yourself, and probably not in the last 12 months, but if at any point you allow yourself a chance to reflect fondly on where you're at in your life. Because how old are you now, Tyler? 29. You're 29 years old, right? Mm. Are you scared of feeling reflective or feeling satisfied? I love creating. I need to create. But there's something about when it gets to this level there's something about convincing yourself that it's it's kind of not real it's it's something that will go away and preparing yourself i know that you talk about finality being something that artists are obsessed with but um i think that you just you you have to try to get get okay with that and the quicker you do the more you'll enjoy this moment and yeah, I'm. I'm not. Do you know what ends that? Do you, do you know what? Do you know what cures that? What? The end of narcissism. And do you know what kills narcissism? Kids. <laughs> I can't wait to have kids, man. Yeah, man. It's one more cycle. It's been great hanging, man. Hey, thanks for letting us in. Thanks for coming.